um, and KTRS.com, where you can watch our show live from the First Rule Film and Broadcast Center in the University Tower. Kelly Jackson's here with me, and we're joined this morning by State Representative Bill Otto and community activist Dawn Chapman, who are here to talk a little bit about the West Lake Landfill. Last week, the congressional delegation from uh, the St. Louis area sent a letter to er Ernest Muniz, who is the uh, Secretary of Energy, asking him to uh, please take another look at the West Lake landfill site in the Bridgeton area because it has been a problem for for how long now, Dawn? Well, really 70 years, but it's been there for 42. But we're coming upon the 70-year anniversary of the dropping of the bombs. Yep. So that is when our role as St. Louis in downtown Mallinckrodt began. That's when the processing of uranium in St. Louis, we, we entered the Manhattan Project legacy as a city 70 years ago. So have we had radioactive stuff festering under the ground in Bridgeton for that long? It has been sitting on the surface and in pockets in that landfill for over 42 years. Bill, why has it taken so long to do something <laughs> about this? Um, well, that, that, and that, that's a million dollar question. It always has been. Uh, that, that material was um, from this project from, from World War II. It got moved in various places. It was all dumped there. Um, accidentally and sometimes I think just because it was the only place to go with it. Um, but why, why, why the EPA, of course, they made a record of decision in 2008 and then abandoned that. Of course, that's where we're public and all it wants to go back to. But uh, the fact of the matter is um, it, 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 it's just uh, it's a site that may be complicated and may be a little controversial, but for the community, the best, uh, best interest of the people living there, it's just got to be done something with. And it seems so hard to follow because first you hear, you know, it's under the Department of Natural Resources, and then who is in charge now? And and and, and that's that's it, it is a big aspect of it. The landfill itself is regulated by the state of Missouri. Uh, they're the ones that has the rules, and and um, um, of of course, and with the fire, the the fire and the smell and the impact of the community because of that, it's just it's just been worse and worse. And then when you add to radioactive waste, of course, the state of Missouri has no authority whatsoever with that. That's all um, uh, the EPA. So, so they find ourselves in a, in a position where the a DNR uh, has to enforce rules to keep the landfill from affecting the community and at the same time trying to figure out how to uh, not impugn on the, on the authority of the EPA. Dawn, how is it affecting the community? Oh, you know what? <laughs> it's a mess. You know, the smell alone will knock you over. It's been horrible these past two weeks. But other than that, I mean, there is a psychological effect to knowing that you live next to the world's oldest nuclear weapons waste that's sitting on the surface. You know, every time you put your kid on the bus, you have, you li we live within the shadow of the Manhattan Project. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do have rare illnesses and whatnot, and they're creeping up all over North County because, as Representative Otto said, this waste was moved around like a nuclear hot potato all across North County and ended up at Westlake, where it's been for 42 years. You know, this is the Department of Energy's <coughs> waste. We do have this nasty jurisdiction between DNR and EPA. You know what? Nobody in this community wants it to be with EPA or DNR. The Department of Energy was the one who first contracted to get this waste in St. Louis. We processed the first uranium that went into both bombs right here. They need to come back in and take this site and clean it up. What's the best possible solution here? If they do clean it up, what does that mean, Bill? Well, um, where, do they I mean, where do they take it? What do they do with it? Well, what? they've been processing. They, they clean up the entire North County. They, they've been processing this material for years. Um, the, the process uh, aspect of it can take an enormous volume of, of, uh, of uh, material and reduce it to, to, to a substantially smaller, smaller um, amount. Mm -hmm. um, there are storage areas. There are ways to deal with it. Um, uh, yeah, the original or this uh, record decision from 2008 was just put earth and rocks on top of it, and the fire has really made it evident that, that that's just not possible, the that fire, they have to do something. The fire is underground and has been it, burning in it, the Bridgeton it, landfill, and is it also in the Westlake landfill? Or are they both burning? Um, well, not yet. Um, and how close are they? It's hundreds of feet away at this point, but it's closer than it was three years ago, and it does have a direct path. We're now, we now have radiation in the Bridgeton landfill in a deeper area that's closer to the fire. We just don't know how close, and EPA is currently testing to characterize that area to figure out 
how far south, how close to the fire does the radiation extend, which is another million dollar question. But you know, at the end of the day, you can't let the two of them meet. I mean, that's, that's not something you can ever let happen in St. Louis. Is money preventing this from being cleaned up, Bill? Oh, well, sort of. Uh, Republic Services doesn't, doesn't want to be handed the bill. And what's so interesting about um, the letter that came out last week from the congressional uh, delegates is that one of the PRPs of responsible parties, if they, principal responsible parties or something, um, they, they have said, hey, wait a minute, there's material in here from folks other than are listed mm-hmm. under this. And, and the significance of that is, is that it, it, it may indicate the Department of Energy mis, uh, didn't make the right decision or didn't have all, all the information needed to, to decide who was responsible. And the other is, it'll start spreading the wealth around or the loss around to, to other companies. But Republic is trying hard to control uh, the public message, trying to control uh, their own image, and trying to control our costs. The process of cleaning it up, how dangerous would that be? It's not. You know what? Here, here's the issue. You have sites all across St. Louis that have been cleaned up. I mean, this waste has been dug up all across St. Louis, and you say, well, it's not in a landfill. You're talking about hot spot removal in a landfill. You're not talking about digging an entire landfill up. That's not what the process looks like. And in ter- th- this site is unusual because you have a fire and you have it, you know, the waste in a landfill. But it's not impossible. You have sites like Hanford that get $2 billion a year for cleanup that are currently being cleaned up. And that waste is being moved out and shipped on trains to a licensed storage facility. So in terms of cost at this site, this site doesn't compare to any of the other Manhattan waste legacy sites across this nation. It's being done on a national level. And St. Louis deserves that same attention. Isn't there also a company called Exelon that's involved in this? They're a big nuclear power company, uh, billions yes. and billions of dollars. Are, are, aren't they responsible partly for some of the stuff that's in this landfill? They they inherited responsibility. The the company that additional that actually dumped the waste at Westlake illegally, Cotter Corporation, was a mining company, and then Exelon absorbed them, so they absorbed the responsibility. So okay. yes, they write the checks. And okay. a lot of that is this. That what's interesting is that uh, of all of these companies that were involved in that uh, 70 years ago in the development have all moved around, either folded or been absorbed by other other folks. So, so it's never it's never a, uh, an exact individual or company that that did this. It's always somebody that bought or something like Cotter or Republic Services bought the landfill. Republic Services wouldn't be in this at all if they hadn't acquired. Uh, right. I think it was Allied Waste. Okay. So along the way here, we've had. Dozens, maybe hundreds of families who have been impacted, as Dawn mentioned, who knows what it's doing to the genetic makeup of families in Bridgeton, let alone the smell, let alone what their kids have to deal with every day when they're standing at the bus stop. All of that stuff has been there going on more than four decades now, seven decades since it was placed there, but more than four decades, and nothing is happening. We're caught in this bureaucratic quagmire and nothing is really being well, done. Is it, it? That's unfair to say nothing's being done. North County is being cleaned up. I mean, that's that's w- one of the interesting things about this is that somehow um, this landfill wasn't included in the cleanup that they're already doing in North County. But North County has been under that process for quite a while. But the and, West Lake and landfill itself is still a, an ongoing yeah, absolutely, problem. Ups, absolutely. And and like I said, the uh, the fire and the other things are gone just just makes it uh, exacerbate and it makes it it makes it more dangerous for the community. All there is to it. And you know, at the end of the day, what happened to Exxon and Republic? The DOE sold them nuclear weapons waste. The DOE had no business making a profit off of the selling of waste, and it was against their law at the time which was they were responsible for the disposal they could not sell anything and make a profit off of anything that would need to later be disposed of and that's what they did in this situation so exelon and republic you can make an argument that they bought a lemon from the doe yeah we you know those two companies i think that there was a lot of illegal stuff done i don't appreciate the nasty pr that's being done right now because the community's suffering and these two businesses can fight it out behind the scenes but don't bring the community in and don't slam us but i still at the end of the day and this community believes the department of energy is ultimately responsible for this waste and i don't care who pays for it i don't really think republic or excellent should pay for it let the department of energy handle what is theirs the same way they're handling 
North County the same way they handled the downtown site. That's what this company. Th that's what this community deserves. We do. We deserve our Department of Energy to come in and do the right thing, and that's what the senators are asking. Yeah, this uh, both Senators Blunt and McCaskill and Representatives uh, William Lacey Clay and Ann Wagner uh, signed off on this letter last week to the Secretary of the Energy Ernest Muniz to uh, hopefully get their attention and get something done about this. Uh, State Representative Bill Otto and community activist Dawn Chapman, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. Thank you. Nice to have us. I'm Paul Harris with Kelly Jackson on McGraw Live in the Morning on the Big 550 KTRS. Hi.